Hello everyone, and Richard here. We are from group three, and our group member we have me, Ule, and Penye. Today, the topic of our big old project is the Mexico Drug War. Mexico, officially known as the United Mexican State, is a country in the southern portion of North America. It is bordered to the north by the United States. Mexico is a culture rich country with tremendous beaches, colonial architecture, Asian rune, and of course their food and cuisine, like the street food and well known tacos. Mexico is also one of the countries which is highly liked by the tourists from all over the world. Unfortunately, trap, crime, and cartel that is always looming over the nation, wherein drug cartel have result in a high rate of murder and violence, as well as the clash between drug cartel and the local authority. Mexico drug war has become a global issue that is affecting the whole global population. Drug has been a global issue since many years ago, but today it has become a war between different cartels, a war that kills innocent people inside Mexico, a country that has been affected by this issue in both social and security aspect is Mexico. Mexico drug cartels are leading supply of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, and other narcotics produced to the United Nations and to the world. The violence continued to rage in Mexico more than a decade after a former president, Philip Calderon, launched a crackdown on drug cartel. The Mexico drug war has killed more than 40,000 people, including innocent civilian, cartel henchmen, drug dealer, and federal employee. The impact on the nation has been profound, and the violence has not been contained within it. Kidnapping and murder directly related to the drug cartel violence have spilled over the border into southern Texas in the United States. There are three main sources of this violence in this conflict, such as intra cartel dispute, inter cartel rivalry, and the overall war that Mexican President Philip Calderon government is waging on the cartel. When he entered the office in 2006, Calderon immediately moved on the cartel. He sent in the federal police along with the army unit to eliminate high value leader. The cartel reacted by Unleash a web of violence fighting for turf. So Calderon insists this show the cartel gang are red tall, but his critics say his strategy has often made matter worse. The cartel gang later escalating their violence to counteract the aggressive strategy of the central government. The violence has transformed into something new uh, in recent years. The brutality made out by the cartel gang could potentially be labeled as terrorism. As the government moved on one organization, for instance, the infamous La Familia, and arrested or eliminated critical leadership to type of conflict ensue. For instance, within the cartel, different groups better to fear the power vacuum. Outside the cartel, other organizations recognize the weakness of their competitor and move on to assume its territory and threatening route. This results in a new way of killing. The birth of Mexico major cartels can be looked back to Miguel Angel Felix Carrado, and his next name was the Godfather, who in 1980s became the country licensed with Colombia cocaine trafficker, and his name was Pablo Escobar of the infamous Medellin cartel. Mexican drug cartel over the decade, they have grown, split, forged a new alliance, and battled on another territory, for instance. So here we have Sinaloa Cartel, formerly led by Joaquin Gunsman, also known as the El Capo. Sinaloa is one of the Mexico oldest and most influential drug trafficking group up to date. Uh, next we have Juarez Cartel, a long-standing rival of Sinaloa. And the next one we have Jalisco New Generation Cartel, also known as the CJNG. Jalisco split from uh, Sinaloa in 2010 and is among Mexico's fastest growing cartel. And next we have a Gulf cartel. Its base of power is in the northeast of Mexico. And next we have Lucetas, uh, originally a paramilitary enforced arm for the Gulf cartel. This uh, group is the country most technically advanced and violent group. However, it has lost power in recent years and fractured into rival wing. And the last one is a Belton Leva organization. The group formed 
when the Belton Leva brother uh, split from Sinaloa drug cartel in 2008. Since then, all four brothers have been arrested or killed, but their loyalists operate throughout Mexico. Drug have been a global problem since many years ago. The aim of this video is to study what extent mechanism and conflict resolution have been considered in addressing the Mexico drug war. It is an interesting topic issue of the global level that it was to analyze, study, and understand. It is important to realize that this drug issue has become everybody issue and must be resolved as soon as possible. So in order to understand this drug war, it is necessary to look further into what are the causes, effect, actor, dynamic, consequences, as well as uh, what are the action have been carried out as a conflict resolution. Located in North America, a neighbor of the United States, Mexico is a country that has 19 cities ranked in the world top 15 most violent ones and has a long history of organized crimes related to drugs. The drug lords, who have successfully conducted operations to introduce narcotics such as cocaine, methamphetamines, and other illegal substances into the markets of Mexico and the United States in the early 1950s, started battling for turf which escalated to war that has been claiming hundreds of thousands of lives since 2006 until as of now. Notably, the struggle between the Mexican government and the drug cartels that managed to reach critical points with high death tolls, which is shown to cause major political instability after the turn of the millennium. Documentary of a century-long of drug war investigations has relatively calculated the factors that led to such an event that provides a simple yet reasonable answer to the number one question of why is there a drug war in Mexico. Divided into three parts, the most obvious cause is the poor economic growth. Massive poverty exists in Mexico causing people that are living in impoverished conditions and poorly educated to look for a convenient way to make money by falling into the drug cartels' networks of selling and buying drugs, thus the expansion of drug cartels. The second cause is the escalating militarization. In a manner to stop the violent attacks carried out between cartels, the government of Mexico was in the problem with the involvement of the military that led to a higher number of casualties and even greater instability and violence within Mexico. Basically, they failed to reach their original goal of ensuring public safety. The last one is the continuing implementation of inefficient policy, namely drug prohibition. Since the drug-related violence broke out, both local and cross-border governments had implemented the use of drug as well as supply and demand policy. Yet, it has shown no signs of actual effectiveness when being put into practice as cutting down the supply only drove up the skyrocketing prices and raised up demands of drugs, which in turn resulted in rising count of arrestings, and 100,000 people died of drug overdose. It goes nowhere further than the drug war itself. From minor battles between the drug cartels, it managed to become much bigger and cross-border, thus the world war came into play. Uh, despite Numerous options to depend the power and destructive behavior of drug cartels in Mexico. The so-called drug war is far from being ended. In this regard, three primary actors are known to play major roles in this conflict of drug war. The first rational agent is the Mexican government. The local government specifically during the two most revolutionary presidency, led by President Felipe Calderon in the year 2006-2012, and President Lopez Obrador serving 2018 until now has been criticized severely by both citizens and international communities. President Calderon came to office in 2006 and deployed over 45,000 soldiers to Mexico streets causing an increase of violence and killing more than 18,000 people, making 2009 the bloodiest year of Mexico. While President Obrador on the other hand has put a lot of money and focus on the military, illustrating how the government seemingly tries to re-establish the relationship with drug cartels during decades ago, instead of seeking for new and improved policies to combat the street violence, overall linking the corruption of the running government with the cartels, showing that Mexican government failed to grasp the 
current dynamic of Mexico's security crisis. The second one is the United States government, who cares more about the national interests such as the stagnant economy, competition for global hegemon against China, and the overseas wars. Thus, they are reluctant to make a contribution in this issue, despite recognizing the increasing level of violence through the kidnaps by means of ransom and intimidation of American nationals. By the cartels near the town bordering Mexico, the United States is yet to increase their involvement in quelling the influence and destructive power of Mexican drug cartels. The most powerful is the Sinaloa cartel. Almost the 70% of the world is infected by this cartel. Drug cartels themselves, in the pursuit of gaining power and expanding the territory of their businesses, different gangs got clashed against each other. Two of the most brutal and infamous cartels go by the name of Sinaloa Cartel and Los Zedar. They are heavily responsible for massacre, drug trafficking, intensive armed violence and other forms of atrocities in many cities of Mexico. They recruit people who are willing to make profit of illegal narcotics and kill those in their way. Thus, the violence keeps growing exponentially and there does not seem to be an end in sight which rapidly affects the Mexican legitimate democracy. International relation theories have the potential to shape the decision-making of the principal actors involved in managing this conflict of drug war. From the perspective of realism, the normally views international system as anarchic as it lacks a central authority, this conflict of drug war can be explained under realist assumptions by a demonstration through the rational thinking and action pursued by those actors in terms of self-interest that ultimately aim to increase their chance of survival in an anarchic system. While the state-level actors such as the United States and Mexico inhabit an anarchic system, and the sub-state actors such as the drug cartels, on the other hand, are also viewed as agents behaving in their own rights that all consistently behave in an alike manner regarding the advancement of their material interests in the world that strive for power. Additionally, those that have power in hand will use it to gain a competitive upper hand, hence the inevitability of drug war, as it is a part of human nature to gain that upper hand, just like how the cartels go against one another in order to expand their own enterprises domestically and internationally. Oppositely, unlike realists who discount the relevance and importance of non-state actors, liberalists whose core assumption revolve around economic interdependence and cooperation. They view the non-governmental organization, NGOs, intergovernmental organization, IOs, multinational corporations, MNCs, political parties, activists, and intellectual individuals as relevant actors that generate outcomes in international relations. In liberalism view, Actors who routinely interact with each other on common benefits will lead to a greater cooperation in the long run, as they would realize that the conflict is costly. Thus, the longer it goes on, the larger expense that we have to cover and the higher number of deaths count of all parties involved, not just the personnel of the US and Mexico governments or the drug cartel members, but the innocent individuals as well. Under the leadership of the previous Mexican president and the current one who tends to embrace the military fight back the cattle only further intensified the violence as those unvetted soldiers without proper mandate cause harm uh, more than goods. For instance, uh, the president Phillips initiated the new offensive against drug trafficking organization back in 2008 with the record of 14,006 murderers whereas it went up to 36,579 in 2020. As for decapitation, the government attempts to eliminate high-value targets, such as the head of the cartel, which spiked more present than uh, senseless debt outrage to the public. Therefore, despite the several attempts made by the Mexican government to put a stop to the drug cartel, especially the increasing level of the military intervention in the last 12 years and the policy de decapitation both seems to fail 
as the rise of drug cartel violent grows steadily year after year. Since most of the conflict resolution mechanism has failed, it is sensible to look for new mechanism to respond back to the issue. The first possible mechanism is access to education. Like we previously touched upon, Mexico is a country suffering from a massive poverty and the root of such problem goes nowhere further than the poor education system. People with a little to none access to education obtain high possibility to easily fall into the flourishing network of drug cartel who would provide anyone with job as their enterprise grow. Therefore, proper education is important for the citizen to learn the risk of associating with drug. The other mechanism is creating job. Once again, the, the drug war is nowhere near an end partly due to the support from the local as the cartel bring jobs to the stronger community. Hence, creating jobs can be an effective way to combat drug violence because it is offer people an adequate alternative to work for the cartel. Third, the Mexican government can better use its military and law enforcement personnel by specializing portion of its military forces to deal with the specific facet of the war on drugs by significantly reforming military training procedure, departmentalizing the military and integrating this department into larger bureaucratic system, and also launching a more aggressive public relations campaign, specifically targeting the major leader of the cartel in order to reduce the culture of the fear and the helplessness created by the cartel. In conclusion, after analyzing actor, causes, effects, and the mechanism that were used as the conflict resolution and the possibly effects ones, we can see that the Mexican drug war is quite a complicating case to study. However, with the help of the classical international relation theory such as liberalism and realism, we managed to understand the process of their decision makings that contributes to this war on drugs through rational thinkings and action of the Mexican drug cartel. The Mexican government and the United States in this anarchical power-seeking world.